All right, this is grade five lesson, uh, let's see, grade five, module two, lesson six. And in this lesson, students are going to be um, adding and subtracting fractions with related units using area model. So um, they're gonna use that area model to help get the common denominators. And, and we're gonna use that picture to make sense of the rules rather than just jumping straight to the algorithm. So that doesn't really make sense. So uh, we're gonna do concrete and pictorial representation first, connecting it to the algorithm. So let's get started. All right, and so what we can see here, it says uh, we're gonna complete the area, uh, cl complete the area model to make like units, then we're gonna add or subtract. Okay, so uh, we've got this picture and what they're doing is they're saying, well, here's three fourths plus one eighths and we're gonna model what three fourths looks like. Now, we don't have common denominators right now. We have uh, the denominator of fourths and a denominator of eighths and we need to kind of rename so that they both have the same uh, denominators. And we can either take that three fourths and scale it up to have eighths as our denominator, or we could take our eighths, our one eighths, and scale it down so that it has fourths as our denominator. And in this case, uh, this specific problem, it's gonna make more sense to take our three fourths and rename it to have eighths as the denominator. And so we're gonna just kind of imagine uh, that area model being cut right down the middle horizontally and so all of a sudden instead of having three-fourths we now each of those got cut into two pieces meaning we had four pieces and each of them got cut into two pieces so four times two is eight and we had three of them that were shaded in and each of them got cut into two pieces so three times two is six so that's that's what's going on here. So when we multiply the numerator and the denominator by two, what we're saying is we're taking our picture and just cutting it down the middle, uh, right in half, to create twice as many pieces as before. It's still the same fraction, it's just been renamed to, in this case, to be six eighths. So now, three fourths is no longer three fourths, 3 fourths is now 6 eighths, 1 eighth is still 1 eighth, and look at this, we now have common denominators, so we have 6 eighths plus 1 eighth gives us 7 eighths. And remember, parents and teachers, the idea of 6 eighths is that eighths is like a label. So you could say like, I have 6 eighths plus 1 eighth and that gives me seven eighths, E-I-G-H-T-S. Okay, <laughs> we'll pretend that says eighths. <laughs> and that's why we add the numerators, but we do not add the denominators because those denominators are really just a label. It's kind of like saying six apples plus one apple equals seven apples. So these are just labels. All right, so now let's take a look at subtraction. And again, we don't have common denominators. Are we gonna scale our halves up to eighths or are we gonna scale our eighths down to halves? And in this case, it makes more sense to take our halves and scale it up to eighths. So right now I have two pieces, but somehow I need to make it eight pieces, which means I'm going to cut into fours. I'm going to take each of those two pieces and cut them into four pieces. And so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I now have eight pieces. So what did I do? I took the two pieces and cut each of them into four pieces, giving me eight. I took the one that was shaded and cut it into four pieces. And so now I have fourths uh, I mean four pieces, so one times four gives me four, and so one half is really the same thing as four eighths, because that timesing by four thing means I took the two pieces, cut them into four, piece, four pieces each, 
and then I took the one piece that was shaded and cut it into four pieces. And that's why that four times four thing, or that timesing by four and the timesing by four thing uh, gives us a new fraction, but it's actually the same. All we're doing is cutting everything into smaller pieces. So one half is no longer one half. One half is now four eighths. Three eighths is still three eighths. And four eighths, take away three eighths, gives us one eighth. All right. Let's draw a model to make like units. So in this case, let's see, I've got two thirds and I've got six ninths. Is it easier to scale my two thirds up to, to ninths? Or is it easier to scale my six ninths down to thirds? And we could do either. Uh, in this case, let's, let's start with the six ninths and scale it down to thirds. All right, so now when I have six ninths, okay, let's see if I'm gonna do this. How, do, how am I gonna draw this? Let's do it. So when I have six ninths, so a way to have nine pieces is like that. There's my nine pieces right there. And I want six ninths. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's my six ninths. Now I can see that my six ninths, if I group these together in by threes, I can group this together by three, I could group this together by three, and I can group this together by three. The idea of grouping together really means, let's see, how do I do this? Okay, it really means I am taking that six ninths and I'm dividing my nine pieces into groups of three, and I'm dividing my six shaded pieces into groups of three. And so that ends up giving me two thirds. And where do I see my two thirds? I see my two thirds right here. There's one third, two thirds, and there's my third third. So six ninths is really the same thing as two thirds, and we can use division to show that. All right, and our picture also shows that. So now, what does that mean? Well, two thirds is still two thirds, but six ninths is now also two thirds. And when we add those together, we get four thirds, which is from a previous lesson, the same amount as one and one extra third. All right, so moving on to number four. Uh, now we have one fourth minus one twelfth. Is it easier to scale our one fourth up to 12? to have 12 as the denominator? Or is it easier to scale our 1 12th down to fourths? And in this case, it's probably easier to scale our 1 4th up to twelfths. So I'm gonna draw my fraction. So here's 1 4th right here, 1 4th, and 1 4th. So 1 4th, how do I cut this so that I end up with 12 pieces instead of four. Hmm. Well, I can cut each of these into four pieces. Nope, into three pieces, sorry. I could cut each of these into three pieces and that will automatically give me 12 pieces that I was looking for. So what did I do? I took the four original pieces and cut them each into three pieces. And then I had the one shaded in, and I cut it into three pieces. And that gives me three twelfths. And sure enough, I can see that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three twelfths. So looking up here, up here, what are we gonna do? Well, one fourth is now three twelfths. One twelfth is still one twelfth. And now we subtract 3 twelfths minus 1, uh, two, minus 1 twelfth <laughs> is 2 twelfths. And if students really want to, they can say that's the same thing as 1 sixth. But at this point, parents and teachers, we don't need students simplifying all the time. All right. All right. Well, let's do a little bit of remembering. Multiply, showing your method. Oh, let's just do, oh, it doesn't matter which method we use. Let's do partial products because I like partial products. All right, so we're gonna multiply by two, 
And let's see, I'm gonna kind of do it in a different different way just because I want to be different. So this is two times 4,000. That gives us 8,000. And then this is two times 300. That gives us 600. And then this is two times 50. Two times 50 is 100. And then lastly, two times eight is 16. And then I can add these together and I get 8,000. Oh, let's do it in red. I get 8,716 and that is my answer. 8,716 using the partial products method. I love the partial products method because it just, I don't know, it makes sense. And then here, A, B is a line. So you got a line right here, AB, you got a line CD, and they intersect right here, boom. Write and solve an equation to find the unknown angle measures, right? And okay, so what? Write and solve equations to find the unknown measures. Okay, so the measure of A and C, A and C. All right, what they're saying is they want us to remember that this makes a, uh, a semicircle, a half circle. So my equation is 145 degrees plus X has to equal 180 degrees. So we do a little bit of subtraction, 180 take away 145. That's gonna give us 35 degrees. So that means this angle right here is really 35 degrees. And then in green, so we wanna know uh, angle C and B. So this angle right here, and we can see that it makes a semicircle this way, or it also makes a semicircle this way, doesn't it? There's, we have choices. And so in either case, we see that it is 35 degrees plus Y equals 180 degrees. And so we do a little bit of subtraction, 180 take away 35 is gonna be 145. A Little bit of subtraction there. And so now we know that angle Y is really 145 degrees. And is that it? That is it. So that wraps up grade five, module two, lesson six adding and subtracting fractions using the area model and you know what don't forget to subscribe